Hi everyone, hope you're keeping safe and eating super well. If it's your first time here, my name is James and I'm from Sydney, Australia. Today's video is gonna be about the Dracaena fragrance or otherwise known as the happy plant. Oh, hey, hey, is that a Dracaena in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? So the happy plant is one of the easiest house plants to look after. However, despite its easy reputation, I have observed some common issues and I'm here to provide some solutions on what I think you can do to fix them. I am admittedly a little bit of a helicopter plant parent, so if you are a little bit like me, there are things that you should absolutely avoid to keep your happy plant happy. Don't forget, if you liked today's video, remember to give it a thumbs up. It'll tell YouTube that you want me to continue making videos for you guys and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any updates. Don't go anywhere. The Dracaena fragrance is also known as the corn plant or the dragon plant. I actually like to call it the happy plant. I was first on the hunt for a medium sized plant for my apartment and when I stumbled upon the happy plant here, it was at Bunnings and it costed about $37.50. They come in so many different sizes. You can get them from really small to about medium and to even large to extra large. So I thought this was a wholesome video to share, but I actually surprised my dear friend Crystal exactly one year ago from today's date on her birthday with a small happy plant. Hello, surprise, happy 30th. <laughs> it's actually a major coincidence that I'm filming it on her birthday today. She was already an avid plant collector, so I thought this was the perfect one to give her because of its easy care nature. My other dear friend actually bought a really big one for her living room and I thought I'd just show you a photo on how big they can actually get. So here I'm trying to illustrate that they come in so many different sizes. So I started to observe that the happy plant is quite common across office buildings and this is due to their easy care nature and that they can tolerate low levels of light. Usually office buildings can be quite dimly lit and these guys can really tolerate low levels of light. I'm stressing the word tolerate in this instance because plants need light in some sort of shape or form. The happy plant can tolerate from low, medium to bright indirect light. I do find that they do much better in bright indirect light as opposed to low. So I have this happy plant usually sitting next to my couch which receives about medium to low light. It has done okay, but if you do want optimum growing conditions, consider bright indirect light. So the happy plant is one of my OG plants and it's one of the first plants that I ever purchased when I first got into indoor plants. I remember I struck a conversation with the staff at Bunnings and asked her, what are one of the easier house plants to look after? And she directed me to the happy plants. She said, this is a happy plant and it's called happy because you don't really do much to keep it happy. I only water mine every three to four weeks. So now I might disagree a little bit with that statement because there are a few things that I think you should do because I have been experiencing some problems in the past year or so. They are easy plants, granted that you're setting them up in the right environment. Now let's get into some common problems and how to rectify them. Number one, browning or yellowing tips. Now browning and yellowing tips is a common occurrence for the Dracaena. Sometimes this is considered normal. However, if you're finding that it is excessive browning and yellowing, this could be an underlying issue that you need to diagnose. Naturally, Dracaenas will yellow and brown their tips over time. And if you don't like this aesthetically, what I do is I generally just snip the browning off. I'll usually find that once I snip them off and if there's no further issues, the browning will stop. So here's a couple of questions to help diagnose your Dracaena. Where is it placed? Is there too much direct sunlight? They can tolerate between low, medium to bright indirect light. However, I'm finding that bright direct light will scorch their leaves. So it is best to keep it away from direct sun rays. How often are you fertilizing? I find that excessive yellowing can be caused by too much fertilizer. I personally find that if you've got them sitting in low levels of light, they don't need much feeding at all. So sometimes I'll have some excess fertilizer from watering my other plants. And unfortunately my happy plant was getting the remnants of it. I'll be sure to be fertilizing less in the future. Are you neglecting your watering or overwatering? Due to the reputation of it being easy, I found that I was watering it quite infrequently and also sporadically, and usually my Dracaena will get in the trail lens of the rest of the watering can. Of course, this can be fixed by correcting your watering habits. Remember to check the soil with your finger or your moisture meter on when it needs to be watered. Number two, splitting leaves. 
Now I find that this is an extremely common occurrence for people who own Dracaenas. I know that in my case, the splitting of the leaves is caused by a little bit of the physical impact that I am imposing on it. So normally my Dracaena sits next to my couch and sometimes when my guests come over, they'll kind of ruffle a little bit of the leaves because it is growing quite large and quite sparse over my couch. I find that I'm constantly moving my Dracaena around, which is also contributing to that physical impact. So splitting of the leaves can be caused by minor physical stress in this case. However, if you're starting to notice excessive splitting, you should start monitoring your watering patterns to make sure that you're not underwatering or overwatering. Just remember, Dracaenas have their basic needs as well. A lot of neglect can send it down the wrong path. Number three, leaf curling. Leaf curling can be contributed by a number of different factors. This includes exposure to extreme temperatures. I know that I'm personally a little bit guilty of this one because I leave the balcony door open to air my apartment out, especially during winter time. This is actually fluctuating the temperatures in my apartment quite drastically. A number of other reasons could include excessive light, improper watering, lack of nutrients, too much nutrients, and finally any infestations of diseases. Of course, if there's any infestations or pests, you should be treating them accordingly and immediately. Number four, leaf twisting. Now leaf twisting is a measure of self-defense and it can be caused by a number of reasons. If the air is too dry in your home or if the plant is too warm or if the plant is not receiving enough water. This is because it reduces the surface area of the leaf so that less water evaporates from it. So as mentioned, I'm guilty of underwatering my happy plant, so I just need to correct my watering patterns in this case. Just make sure that you're saturating the soil completely and watering it all the way to the bottom. Dracaenas will do better in a soil mix that has some water retention. So if you are noticing that the water is draining a little bit too quickly to the bottom, you may want to add some cocoa choir or some peat moss to the mix. Number five, leaf drop. So leaf drop is considered normal, granted that the lower level leaves are dropping off to make way for new growth. If you are noticing excessive amounts of leaf drop, ask yourself the same questions. Is the spot that I put it too bright? Am I fertilizing this too much? In my case, I was fertilizing it a little bit too much and all I need to do is cut back on it. Am I underwatering or overwatering it? Ask yourself those same questions. Once you have all these things corrected, you'll be on the path to a happier, happy plant in no time. Once you find the spot and have corrected everything, make sure you leave it alone. Unfortunately, my happy plant is looking a little bit like Sideshow Bob at the moment. The growth is quite sparse because I had kept it in low light for quite some time. And due to low light, the leaves start stretching out. However, I have moved it closer to the light source and I can report that I am seeing signs of new growth, which is awesome. You too can correct your Dracaena. So I thought I'd consolidate a quick summary on four simple checks that you can undergo to diagnose your issues. Firstly, check your location. Secondly, check your watering habits. Thirdly, check your fertilizing frequency. And finally, check for pests and infestations and treat them ASAP. If you've made it to the end of this video, I just want to say a huge thank you for watching. Remember to smash that like button if you liked today's video. It'll tell me that you want me to continue making videos and hit that subscribe button and that bell icon if you want to receive notifications so you don't miss any updates when new videos drop. Remember, I've got plant rants and bands coming up, so stay online because we've got some cool content coming ahead. Welcome to Plant Bants and Rants, where I showcase some cool, funny, or interesting plant content that I find online. So I'm really excited to show you all this one. Someone slid into my Instagram DMs the other day and propositioned me. Look at this. Hey cutie, are you interested in being my sugar baby? $500 daily allowance up for a grab. So of course I jumped onto the opportunity and here's my reply. Only if I can have your Monstera. Sadly, Liz hasn't replied to me since.